anymore. They just look completely out of sync. Doesn't he love it? Get some of that. My goodness. What a move and what a player, Sydney Kings captain Xavier Cooks joins us. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having you. me, man. Uh, <laughs> That's slam dunk on someone. Uh, it must be brilliant. As somebody who, uh, you know, vertically challenged and has a vertical leap of five centimetres, <laughs> to get someone like Isaac Humphreys, a big man, and to fly to do that, good fun feeling? It was a great feeling. It was a one-off thing, I think, but it was a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about the Kings that you love so much? You've recently signed a new three-year deal with them. Just the environment at training, we have a great time, we really enjoy each other's company and we're super competitive. We love to win, um, the owners and that kind of stuff love to stir the pot a little bit and be the villains and I love that kind of feeling. <laughs> I, I want to get to the Kings in a minute but there's been some news just today, you have been selected for the Boomers? Yeah I have, yeah it's pretty cool. So yeah, this really is for cool. a World Cup, Cup, what's yeah. it? Uh, to qualify yeah. for the World Cup next year, we've got to win one more game and hopefully we can beat Kazakhstan. <laughs> because you've been involved before uh, and then missed out, you had a, a, an injury which stopped your progress there. Yeah, yeah I made the Boomers team probably 2019 I think and then I did my meniscus and my knee had to pull out and then um, I was the reserve last year for the, the Olympic team and that was great the boys got a bronze medal I wish I was there but it was good for them. <laughs> Absolutely. Xavier I know you watched The Last Dance the Michael Jordan documentary as a young basketballer what was the one little thing you took away that that stuck with you? I mean, what a great documentary. Uh, two things, really. Why did they leave Luke Longley out? My guy Longest should have been in there. <laughs> but uh, two, Absolutely. just uh, Michael Jordan's mentality around leadership really stood out to me. Just um, He talked about a leader, someone that pushes someone when they don't want to be pushed, and that's really relevant for me right now, trying to transition to this leadership role for my team. And it's really unnatural for me, but it's kind of in good insight from him. At the Sydney Kings, um, uh, there's a selfless mantra, isn't there? Steph Curry, the most selfless superstar, Golden State Warriors, selfless. Selfless wins in basketball, doesn't it? Oh, for sure, 100%. You can tell by the team last year, we didn't really care who top scored, just as long as we win the game. And even we played, what, two nights ago against Melbourne, we scored 84 points and no one scored more than 14 points, which is, really stands for what our team's about, just sharing the ball and everyone enjoys the party, I guess. Mm. Just talk a, a little bit in general on basketball in, in this country. It, it seems to have so much momentum behind it. I know the kids, because I've got, I got a kid who plays basketball, uh, and the kids at the school, and in all the schools, and, and a lot of the areas and from where I am, from the northern beaches, they're all playing basketball. And it's costing a fortune in basketball cards. Oh, it's a fortune. Basketball's an expensive <laughs> Mate, sport. They've all got yeah. their folders, and they're buying basketball cards. Do you feel that? Do you guys feel that basketball's got a real momentum behind it? 100%. I grew up in a real big basketball family. My dad was a basketball coach, so I always was around basketball. But no one I really knew played basketball just besides myself. Mm. And now, now when I go, it's on the news, it's everywhere I go, and it's doing interviews all the time. It's kind of weird for me, but I, I absolutely love it. I think it's a, it comes back to the boomer success and Patty Mills and all those kind of yeah, guys yeah. and bringing them in the bronze, and it's been great. The Kings currently have um, the record for 16 straight wins <laughs> on the road. What is the secret to the success? I don't want to jinx myself here, but uh, we love just being the villains, walking into the stadiums and everyone's booing us and, you know, the crowd's going crazy and we really embrace that feeling and now we've got this thing rolling, we don't really want to end it, so it's good. It's tough to win games on the road, especially in the NBL. You were talking about leadership before and you have led, led, led that team and you led them brilliantly. In fact, you were the MVP of the grand final that the, the Kings won uh, last, last year. You said that wasn't the role that you, you know, embraced early. What was, what was the change in you? Just the team really needed a leader. I'm naturally that kind of guy that just chilled back and laid back, wants to have a lot of fun. And then the team really needed someone to stand up and be a leader on the team and coach how to talk with me about that kind of stuff. And as the year went on, I kind of progressed and I'm still progressing and not a great leader, but I'm getting better every day. Well, you're doing very well. You went to Wellington in the off season uh, in New Zealand and, and played there. Why that decision? Others, there was the chance to go to for another summer competition in the States. Obviously, an NBA dream still part of your future? Oh, for sure. NBA is definitely in the back of my mind forever, but... Um, I don't know, it was a chance to go see New Zealand, that was awesome. And um, I don't really love the summer league style of basketball. It's pretty, we talk about selfless mm. basketball and that's kind of everyone's trying out to try and get to that next step. And just, I don't really thrive in that settings. And then Welly was a good chance to stay in shape and play good basketball. And we had a good time over there. We didn't win, but we had a good time. So just quickly, the, the boomers, when, does that, when do you go in and when does that all happen? I don't exactly know. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> November, I think around the seventh mark or somewhere around that. But I'm just focusing on Saturday's game and they'll so come you, up when it comes yeah, up. Yeah, Cairns, you're playing obviously. Cairns, yeah, yeah. We owe them boys one. They beat us last time at home, so we owe them boys. I love this attitude. Did you do you get involved in the trash talk? I mean, we love the trash talk. Oh, uh, we got Sean Bruce for that. He's the yeah, best in the world at that. But, uh, <laughs> I do get a little bit myself. Yeah. It is interesting this year. There's an extra edge to the basketball coverage, isn't it? There's spicy stories in about conflict and all that. It's Almost seems it's playing its part in revving up the sport. I see Matt Lowe's doing a great job for the Telegraph. It, yeah, it's, Matt Lowe's doing a great job. I think they're doing a good job of... It's always been that chirpiness in the game. They're just getting a lot more notice now. And players like Sean Bruce giving it to the Melbourne boys. And we love it. Like, it's awesome. It makes the game more entertaining for the players and for the fans involved. And it's great that the coverage is just... It's getting more known, I guess. Uh, sensational. Your performances have been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for dropping in. Of course, you can catch the Sydney Kings uh, take on the Cairns Taipans in top of the table clash this Saturday night on ESPN from 8pm. For those interested in going to the game at Kudos Bank Arena, that's me, uh, get your tickets <laughs> via Ticketek. Is that where I've got to go? Uh, thank you so much. I got so you, much. man. You want to <laughs> <ticket>? I got <laughs> you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, guys. Coming up, our chat for the week is next. Stick around. Brilliant, mate.